So we're on a heat question three, keeping cool. You may use the following data for this uh, question. We have the specific heat capacity of water, the latent heat of fusion, and the latent heat of, heat of vaporization for water. <clears throat> the bottles of drinks for the barbecue are kept in a cooler bag. The cooler bag consists of an outer layer of thick plastic material. The middle is filled with foam, and the inner lining is made from silver material. Explain how the foam layer, so we're not getting into all of it, we just want to know about the foam layer. How, how it helps to keep the contents of the bag cool. Okay, the key thing here is to do with insulation. Um, the foam layer insulates because it's uh, porous, it's got lots of air, um, air gaps, which air is a poor conductor, so it's about conduction. So air um, is a poor conductor uh, of heat, and so uh, that traps um, the heat on one side of the layer and the cool on the other side, um, which means it's going to stay cold inside and the heat won't be able to travel from the outside in. Okay. Um, yeah, the other thing I guess is you stop um, air from moving um, in that foam layer by convection because there's nowhere for it to, to really move through, not easily anyway. B. Amy puts four bottles uh, of uh, drink bottles at room temperature into the cooler bag which contains some frozen cooler packs. Explain using the concept of latent heat how the cooling of the drinks is related to the melting of the cooler packs. <sighs> okay. So, uh, if you haven't studied this before, this is going to seem really, really strange. Um, but basically, the idea of latent heat is uh, it, it takes heat to um, it takes energy to change the temperature of something, and it takes uh, an extra amount of energy to uh, change the state from a solid to a liquid. Uh, sorry, from a liquid. That's right, from a solid to a liquid, or a liquid to a gas. Um, and, and that, that change of state is what we're talking about when we're dealing with the latent heat. So um, <clears throat> what we would say here is the drinks are cooled down um, as the cooler blocks take heat from them. So because the cooler blocks, cooler blocks, okay, and they're sitting beside the, the drink. This is my, my can. Let's try and 3D it up a little bit. Okay, you get the idea anyway. So this is a can of Coke or... Or, or whatever, Coke Zero, because sugar's evil. And here's the cooler back, call it C for cooler. And you've previously put the cooler into the freezer, and now you stick it into the bag beside the Coke can. <coughs> and um, the cooler absorbs heat from its surroundings to, um, which, is, which is the energy required when we're talking about this latent heat the energy required to make it turn from a solid to a liquid um, and then you put it back in the freezer again to freeze it to draw that energy back out but in this case it's drawing an energy from the things surrounding it such as the coke can which cools it down um, <clears throat> now a very cool thing that that's sort of covers the um, <coughs> excuse me uh, this is the latent heat of f fusion as well that we're talking about. But that, um, oh, my brain's a little bit scattered. Now, I was, say I was saying, that covers the um, answer to this question. But the um, just as a side note of interest, if you can get some chemicals which take a lot of uh, heat, that, that take a, a, let's call it a lot of heat, that suck in heaps and heaps and heaps of heat, to melt, then you'll produce a uh, a good cooler bag. But it has to melt at the right temperature. It's no good um, if it's say uh, won't melt until it reaches 25 degrees Celsius. Because then, when your your Coke can, which is sitting there at 20 degrees, which is still too warm to drink nicely and comfortably. Um, it's it's not there's not going to be enough temperature for it to do its thing. So it has to be at the right temperature, the right chemicals that'll um, change state at the right temperature to suck in all of that heat um, as it's melting, to cause it to melt. In fact, so moving on, Amy puts 35 grams of ice cubes at zero degrees Celsius into a glass 
containing 300 grams of lemonade at 14 degrees Celsius. When the ice is melted completely, the drink is cooled down to 5 degrees. Calculate the amount of energy that has to be absorbed to change the ice to water at a temperature of 5 degrees. Okay, so uh, this is an excellent question, clearly. And there's a lot of uh, extra information that we don't really need. Um, we are, we are, let's, let's just look at the question really carefully. We're after the, the energy, Q, um, that has to be absorbed to change the ice to water at a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius. Okay. So there are two parts to this. Um, as, we, as we're talking about, we've got um, the, the energy required um, to, to do the melting. So uh, what's the convention for this? Let's just say it's Q to melt is going to be um, the mass of ice that you're melting times by the latent heat of fusion, which is the heat it's going to, uh, the, the energy it's going to suck in per mass to, um, to melt it. And we also, to that, we need to add the, um, the energy required um, to change the temperature. So I'll, I'll call that delta T for change in temperature, which is going to be, again, the mass times by the um, l oops, specific heat capacity uh, times by that change in temperature, which in this case is 5 degrees because it's ice, okay, um, and you're making ice at 0 degrees and you're making water go into, um, uh, yeah, raise the temperature from that 0 degrees once it's melted up to 5 degrees. Okay, so information we don't need um, or maybe it's better look at the information we do need and then we'll see the information we don't need. We've got 35 grams of ice. So that's 0 0.035 kilograms because we put SI units into these equations. Uh, 0 degrees, that's our initial temperature. 5 degrees is our final temperature. So uh, 5 is our change in time. Um, the latent heat is given above. The heat capacity was given above. And again, we've got the mass, um, which is 0 0.35 kilograms for both. Um, so we can calculate these separately and then add them together. So 0 0.035 times by the latent heat of fusion is 330,000. So uh, we would plug that in, in here. Um, and that equals uh, 11,000. 550 joules plus um, mass times the specific heat capacity again from above times by the change in temperature and that'll equal uh, 735 joules so we add both of those together so you can see I'm sort of sneakily doing this down um, because your equations shouldn't be equals this plus this when it, yeah you can, don't worry, teachers will understand that, um, and students who have done it before and been told off for it, but I'm not going to labour it because it's already getting long. We add those together, 12,285 joules is the energy, is the unit for energy. Okay, last part, D. As Amy is leaving the swimming pool, um, a gentle breeze blows across her. Amy notices she feels cooler when the breeze is blowing, even though a nearby thermometer shows no change in temperature. Explain why Amy feels cooler in the breeze even though the temperature is unchanged. Okay, here is Amy's, oops, almost drew too many fingers, Amy's arm. Uh, it's got water on it. Let's just consider a small puddle of water here on the surface. And we've got the breeze blowing across. And, and uh, presumably on that breeze it's taking water droplets in uh, evaporation. Evaporation and those water droplets are being carried away. Um, so evaporation process is occurring. Um, remember evaporation requires latent heat um, energy to be absorbed to change the state from a liquid to a gas. So latent heat, is, heat energy is required um, and that energy comes from Amy, from her arm, and when you take away energy from something, 
it cools down. So let's put all this together. As the uh, breeze blows over the top, taking water droplets away, evaporation occurs. There is heat re uh, required, <coughs> latent heat of evaporation uh, is required, and that, that heat energy comes from her arm, makes her feel cool because of the lack of energy that was there. Lovely.